Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is IRYENI, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey what's up guys, it's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 136 now guys. I've picked out 5 new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. So let's just jump straight into it. Starting off at a number 5 spot we have the Lilith's Black Sun Armor Set. This mod adds custom armor into the game that can be crafted at the Forge under the Daedric category. And it may look like any other type of Daedric armor, but it's actually enhanced ebony armor if you look closely enough. It also requires ebony armor in order to craft this Black Sun Armor Set, and it's a very greatly enhanced ebony set that also comes with a unique hood. You can craft a whole bunch of different hoods, there's a light armor version and then a ghost version as well as a heavy armor version. Now normally the heavy armor version just goes with the standalone part of the Black Sun armor set, but the ghost version makes it so your entire face disappears. As you can see I'm going to show you that right now. The entire face of your character will disappear and you'll be able to see right through them and I think that's a really really cool aspect of having this hood. Not allowing the other enemy to see who is actually killing them will make you you way more intimidating in battle. As well as the extra enchantment that you get along with the light armor and ghost version, the sneaking is 25% more effective enchantment. This I feel will be very useful to use as a Dark Brotherhood cap instead of actually the Dark Brotherhood cow that you get from doing the quests. I think that using the Black Sun armor set hood would be a better idea because you'll be able to actually hide your face and make it so no one will know who's committing the murders that you're sent out to do. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at a number 5 spot and I think it's a great looking armor set so I'd recommend downloading it and giving it a try. Coming in at our number 2 spot we have the Bulgans, Mihail's Monsters and Animals. Now if you aren't familiar with Mihail's Monsters and Animal mods, they add a whole bunch of new creatures into the game, and this one is focused on the Bulgans. I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of a backstory on what the Bulgans actually are and where they come from, so if you'd like to skip ahead you can go ahead and do so. Now the descriptions of the Bulgans starts off with the large Bulgans are a brutish ancient race, easily identified by their red skin and heavy dwarven weapons and armor they carry. They once lived in all the provenance of Skyrim. Coexist with the Snow Elves and the Dwemer in peace. When the Nords and the Giants arrived on Tamriel with the thirst for conquest, the Bulgan were decimated and almost extinct. The Dwemer, the only ones capable to stand before the Nords, most in part because they lived in different locations and have much different interests, offered to the Bulgans help and protection, pretty much the same they've done to the Snow Elves, but in the Bulgans' case with the intention to use them as living weapons in the battlefront, because of their great physical strength. In the ancient times, Bulgans were relatively broad-minded with other races, but in current times they become extremely violent and will kill anyone who crosses their paths. Despite this, some Bulgans, generally the ones addicted for alcohol, have accepted to work as mercenaries and bodyguards to protect some bandit leaders and wizards. But in general, Bulgans are seen by other races as fierce, heartless, and thug beasts, much worse than giants. Some of them paint their bodies with tribal signs and their skin color can be red or orange. Now with this mod it includes 5 new variants of Bulgans. There's the Bulgan Thug, which is the weakest of the 5, and is generally addicted to wine and mead. Because of that, they are frequently hired as mercenaries and guards for bandit camps. Next up we have the Bulgan Butcher, which is the one that prepares the food in the Bulgan camps, and it makes traps to ambush prey. And then we have the Bulgan Charger, which is the strongest variant, which were used to charge against the enemy in Battlefront. Next up we have the Bulgan Charger, which is a very strong variant that was used to charge against enemy battlefronts, defeating immediately dozens of soldiers. They're trained to attack with no fear, and their big helmets cover their eyes totally, and they charge against their enemies totally blinded, like an angry bull. And then we have the Bulgan Beastmaster, which is one of the strongest Bulgan, but one of the lazier ones. He dual wields weapons, but what makes the fight so dangerous is they have trained boars to attack with them. And last but not least, we have the Bulgan Tanker, which is trained to protect the Dwemer soldiers on the battlefield. This Bulgan carries a huge dwarven tower shield, and has the biggest physical endurance of all the variants. They are very slow and wield giant war hammers while protecting their companions with their big shields that are their biggest weapon. Now be careful because the impact of the shield may throw you to the ground immediately. Now those are the 5 new variants that the mod actually covers, but the Bulgans actually have custom sounds and custom fight mechanics, so you'll have to find out how each Bulgan battle mechanics work in order to defeat them. There's also 4 new usable weapons and a new creature which is a tamed boar. 
There's also more wildlife and lore, so immersion and hard fights. I think this mod is great, and having another enemy that is extremely powerful, just like the giants, makes it so going into these Dwemer ruins, which is where they're located, will be a lot more difficult, and you'll actually have to plan your attacks accordingly. And it's a relatively small mod, adding a new creature into the game, coming in at 29 megabytes, so if you do have the space in your load order, I would totally recommend downloading the Bulgans Mahal Monsters and Animals mod. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have Mofu Mofu 372 Combat Animations. Now what this mod does is replace all of the combat animations for the one-handed and two-handed sword weapons. It also replaces normal attacks and power attacks, and adds a bash animation for one-handed and two-handed. It also adds a running attack for one-handed swords, and whenever they say combat attacks, they mean movement animations, so no stance animations or idle animations, so if you do have a mod that edits these stance animations or idle animations, then it can coincide with this mod as well. I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit of what the animations actually look like, and I really like what they look like, especially the fact that you actually stab with the sword now. Normally it was just slashing with the vanilla animations, but this one with a power attack, your guy does a lunging power attack forward and actually lunges their sword straight into someone instead of just slashing them with it. So I definitely think that these combat animations are a lot better than vanillas, but if I had to make a request for combat animations, I'd probably stick to the ones from Oblivion, because not only were the animations good, but you could unlock and animations as you progress in certain skills. Say you unlocked like two-handed level 50, you would unlock a new animation that does more damage, and it's like an extra power attack. It'd be really cool to see different implications of this with different types of combat animation mods. Being able to have different types of stances and different types of attacks, as well as different animations that go along with those attacks would be a great overall thing to have whenever it comes to a combat animation mod. But overall, I really do like the combat animations that Mofu Mofu has brought to us, so that's definitely why it comes in out of number three spot, so I strongly recommend downloading their combat animations mod. Coming in at our number two spot, we have a mod that goes perfectly along with Mofu Mofu's combat animations mod, and it's the Dynamic Combat mod. Now what this mod does is it improves melee weapons by enabling extra attacks and creating a faster way to trigger them. It enables you to use sprint power attacks with the one-handed and two-handed axe and great swords, depending on which two-handed weapon you're using. This mod also makes it possible to trigger these attacks without sprinting by using the sheath key. You can also do any of these attacks while moving in any direction, so long as you're not standing still. You can still sheath your weapon, but you have to be standing still first. It also enables the disabled 3 slash attack for great swords, and it's a simple ESP file, so it shouldn't conflict with any other mods that you have. Now, I really love the way that this combat is set up, because I really do like the sprinting power attacks. You know, before, whenever you were running around and chasing enemies down, it was kind of annoying that you weren't able to do a full-on lunge sprinting forward. You could do a power attack whenever you were just simply moving forward, but sprinting was not an option. You could not sprint or do anything along those lines to trigger a power attack while sprinting in any direction. This changes that so that you'll have a huge lunge forward whenever sprinting forward. I really feel like this mod enhances combat and also speeds it up, because originally in vanilla Skyrim, the people are kind of damaged sponges and you'll just keep swinging over and over and over again until they eventually die. This makes it so that you can sprint and do a whole bunch of different combat moves, and combined with the combat animations that was the number 3 spot, it just makes it so you have so many different ways of going through combat and having different battles as time progresses. So if you're looking to completely overhaul your combat, with new animations and new combat mechanics, then the combination of the Mofu Mofu Combat Animations mod and the Dynamic Combat mod are mods that you'll definitely want to check out and add to your load order. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number two spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Dynamic Combat mod. Coming in at our number one spot, we have the Dark Forests of Skyrim. Now the mod page reads that this mod is a comprehensive, dark fantasy style landscape overhaul for Skyrim. The landscape will look very different and this mod will breathe new life to your game. The Dark Forest of Skyrim includes over 4,000 hand-placed flora, such as trees, shrubs, mushrooms, etc. And this mod does not change the vanilla trees, so it's therefore compatible with Skyrim flora overhaul, enhanced vanilla trees, and any other mod that changes vanilla trees. This mod also makes other changes, such as adding 1,000 hand-placed dead pines to mountain areas, forest, and snow-covered areas. The rift also has many dead and living aspen type trees, while pines in the interior have been removed. Ground fog has also been added to many areas of the rift, and East March hot springs now have more dead trees and living aspens near the forest edge, and more grass near Witch Mist Grove. It also features a giant mushroom forest. The White Run Plains are still open and grassy, with living and dead trees added to the areas of interest. Farms and the entire area of Rorikstead is now a living and vibrant oasis. 
The reach is now filled with 20 different types of dead trees, colorful aspens, twisted and tall juniper trees, and large cedar pines. And a forest of giant redwood trees now stretches from the south of Dragon Bridge to the Crabber's Shanty. The only thing that this mod warns you about is it says this mod adds thousands of hand-placed trees and floor to Skyrim, so it's impossible to make it compatible with every single player home and other mod that adds static objects. So if you do have a tree growing through your house or a town, simply just either delete the house or delete the mod Dark Forest of Skyrim. Either way, I don't really see it conflicting with too many different house mods, so I would definitely recommend giving this mod a try and seeing the new atmosphere and how the landscape actually looks in your game. And that's definitely why it comes in at our number one spot, so I'd strongly recommend dialing the Dark Forest of Skyrim mod. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later.